I'm not related to my next guest, but we fight like siblings. Please welcome brilliant comedian who I love to pieces, but who makes me fucking crazy, Bill Burr. <laughs> got along great. No, we love each other. But you have to, we always fight. We fight it's often. Cause, no, because I go on stage and then you try to correct my jokes. I don't try to correct yeah, you your do. jokes you're like, sometimes. But what if you said if the woman did this because of this? And that you only, was you one only... time, but, and I admit I was a, being aggressive. Micro. It was a micro, microaggression. Microaggressive, yeah. Sometimes I read interviews with you and you talk about everything you hate and if you added it all up, you would get me. But somehow we love each other. Am I correct in saying that? I think that you love me. Because every time we fight, as I'm driving home, I get a text from you that says, you know I love you, right? And I go, yeah, I love you that, too. That isn't me. <laughs> I've, never, I've never said, you know I... Are you, you fucking I, serious? Well, my memory isn't good, but oh. I don't remember doing that. I'll show you. I, what, you say? I them? can't believe you're... No, texts just exist. <laughs> yeah, I, s I press save on my text. What kind of phone do you have? No, I, I like delete them after a while. What are you saving it for? You delete texts? Yeah. Oh, I never do because all our friends die and then it's all you have left. <laughs> <laughs> How many have you had? Die? I'm up, I kind of I have a huge day. list. I'm I, 30, I 30. Yeah. Get something funny out of that. <laughs> That's what you do. I'm not good at that. I'm not good in the mom. All right. I do like you. And I just, I always feel like you're frustrated with me. I fucking love you. Look at my Sometimes posture right now. I'm like, I'm as far over into this chair as I can possibly be. I just feel like kind of came here to hang out and have a good time. And you just like, <laughs> like that intro was just like, yeah. It was I just thought so, you'd like that. I fucking hate this guy. He's a douchebag, but he came down here. I mean, that's how I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you hear a lot of things. I do like you. You like me, but we can be different, still like each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I like to, I don't like being told what to do, but I do like changing with the times or something. I don't really resist that. I feel like you resist that a little more, but ultimately you do change with the times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was wrapping it up. I fucking ripped another. No, I, I feel like with you, there's this person you want me to be. So you, you keep telling me that I'm this fucking guy that I'm not. Who's the guy you think I think you are? I, I don't know. I don't know who sent you those texts. I'm gonna fucking post them. No, I won't. Okay. I'm, I remember driving home and you being like, you know I love you, and I was like, I love you too. Does not ring a bell at all. When the way you just did it, it did. This was one of my favorite interviews. I had a great time. That can't uh, be I, true. Oh, I liked how weird it got. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, all right. How about this for weird? Thank you, Bill Burr, for coming on my show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The great Bill Burr is hey, here today. I don't know about great. Give me some more. The to greatest. Go. greatest. Oh, the, yeah. great the greatest. The greatest <laughs> guy sitting across from you right now. What, what is this? You've probably heard this a lot that people say that dentists are like high rate of suicide. What is, is there something to that? Have you heard that? Uh, yeah, I think everybody heard that growing up, but I never knew it's one so that... Weird, no, maybe never it's not knew, even true. I've never known one that killed himself. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Did you... Well, it sounds like it was stressful, but not s suicidal. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, he never killed himself. Yeah, he's... He, <laughs> that's what you're asking. Nobody killed himself, yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. this the Oprah part where you're going to try to get me to cry? <laughs> yeah, well, I got nothing he to He thought about it one night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting thing. It seems like you're in love with your daughter, hearing you talk about her on the podcast. Jesus Christ. Well, you're pretty perceptive. You take a care about well, your own I, child. listen, more than that, okay? Because, again, you, you're this character. You uh, gush. You gush over your daughter. Not everyone gushes. Did your dad gush over you? Uh, I mean, I was too little. Yeah, no, my dad was... My dad actually <laughs> at work did. At work, that's when I learned, like, oh, he my gushed. God, yeah, he really likes us. <laughs> oh. But when he came home, yeah, he was that's cracking funny. the whip. <laughs> hmm. your bed mate? You do your studies? Hmm. Well, why not? You know, mm -hmm. it was that shit. Hmm. And uh, he also had a zillion kids, so, I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings how many? do you have? I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking about it. Is there anybody you can <laughs> cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, oh. dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, off the air, off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Jeez. 
I love how surprised he is. Jeez. Well, it's you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Well, I don't know why that got so <laughs> flat uh, on my part. Tell me about uh, all things comedy. I don't know. You say I'm nervous. I'm sweating here. I'm just going to let you sit. Yeah, I know point. you are. You don't have to got, save you, me. You've you got to push through to the other side. It's no, I great. know, but you don't, you don't have to save Look at you. You're all sweaty. You're touching. Like. Dude, if you were a you're reliever, right? Right? Okay. If you were a reliever on the other team, I'd have to come out and check you for Vaseline or something. You touched your hair and your brill a little too many times. He's doctoring the ball. Shit. All right, regroup. Here where we go. Where you get on stage, you talk about topics that are kind of taboo, but you make them really, really funny. So your Christian background is is part of the the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know, as far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good Lord. So did you that's, feel that's, that's you were being self- disrespectful or just you, you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, they just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think you know I want what I'm to. talking about. It's a morning show. I understand. Like, Eight times you I came on. Is this out in, uh, did you, is this in Boston? Where do you live now? I live in Los Angeles. Oh, that's where you're in Los out in Angeles. LA. Frightening place to live. Yeah, yeah. Dollar crashing. City technically has no water supply. You know? <laughs> so it sounds like no, a lot of fun. Yeah, the yeah, zombies yeah. are coming. So <laughs> I've been thinking about getting a gun. Oh, my God. I, I know people don't like it, but you got to. What am I supposed to make a, get a windmill, right? You start growing <laughs> zucchini. <laughs> and then what? All I'm doing is just growing that for the strongest guy in the block, you know? <laughs> oh, you're no, I'm serious. I've been going to gun stores and oh uh, my God. I have, and these rednecks are all telling me the same thing because I didn't grow up with guns. So they're just going, all right, you never had a gun. You want to get yourself a shotgun. It's got a great spread. That's what they keep saying. It's got a great spread. You don't even got to aim. You got a problem, you just sort of whip around. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, I just want to shoot the guy. I don't have to do, like, a bunch of drywall work to, like, reframe my diploma. So, uh, do you, are, you at, uh, are you with your girlfriend uh, living in LA? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm okay. technically married, but I'm married how, like, I want to be married. Yeah. Which is, I don't sign that behind the music contract <laughs> where, you know, everything works and, out until it doesn't work out. Had... <laughs> yeah. No, you see, Sugar Shay Mosey, one of the greatest boxers of all time, he's losing his championship belt in a divorce. Oh, that's losing, yeah. It's like you're trying to break a man. Why does she want those? <laughs> right? It's going to break they, a they, man. They, they, they go with their shoes. <laughs> When you get a divorce, all of a sudden it costs like 50 grand a month to give a kid Fruit Loops. Right? <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you, there all of a is sudden. an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country, <laughs> and it is just not being addressed oh my God. on any level. What are you talking any about? Level. What do you mean? What am I talking about? Every guy out there is just getting that nobody's safe. Oh my God! Nobody's safe. <laughs> Football players, cra- actors, politicians. Nobody and they never sick. get called whores. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's maid is still called the maid <laughs> in the story. <laughs> she knew his wife on a first name basis, hooked up with this dude in their bed, and is still called the maid. <laughs> Why did she bang him? <laughs> Why? Jeez, yeah. Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? Right? <laughs> You don't think it's because of that kindergarten cop money he's got laying around the room? I'm not, and listen, I'm not condoning what the man did, but you know, there just needs to be, guys need to be educated. There's nothing out there to help a guy handle becoming rich and famous for that that, that platoon of whores that's going to come over the hill. Like, like Braveheart, faces painted, skirt on, just running down the hill. Yes! There's nothing out there. No, it's like guys never learn how to keep themselves in check. Society does it for you. Yeah. Just women aren't going to bang you because you drive the forklift at Home Depot. Right? Despite the fact 
that you want to bang all of them, they're not going to do it. So you didn't keep yourself in check. The forklift job did, right? <laughs> then all of a sudden you hit a lot, the lottery, you know? Yeah. And then you can just give in to all of that. Like, I don't, I'm so sick of all these trolls coming on TV, <laughs> judging these great men. <laughs> These great men, all these guys, anytime one of these guys gets caught for screwing around, these guys come waddling out of their cubicles with their jowls, their absolutely reprehensible behavior. Like, they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level. You know? Yeah, yeah. As you walk over to your Ford Focus, are you really beating these women off of you? All those people who judge Tiger Woods? How many people here golf? When was the last time you walked off the 18th hole and there was a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to hump your brains out? And you were like, sorry, ladies. You know? And like I said, oh thank you. You guys, Bill Burr is his name. Awesome. Enjoy him while you can get him. That's right. You know, I was reading a little bit about you, and it says that you have a tendency to kind of go with your first thought. Yeah. Because reading makes you sleepy. That's right. <laughs> And my first so, thought is this is the best week to be here, the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. But just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What is true? This is like the Oscars uh, for oh. prostitutes. Okay, all right. This well, entire week. Let's remember, we're G-rated here, <laughs> folks. All right, so we're going to go back to a safer subject because, as okay. you know... Okay, I'm sorry. I as didn't, you I didn't know, realize. this is National Blueberry Pancake Day, right? I'm sure you woke up and that was the first thing in, on, on your mind. Absolutely. So I want to give you a little quiz, a little test, all right? Because oh, you can't look at my script. But okay. there are some very famous cereal box icons yes, and are. I want you to be able to look at some of these characters and see if you can determine which cereal it's associated with if you get it okay. right you'll hear this oh. if you get it wrong you'll hear this oh geez okay <laughs> okay let's look at our first one you're gonna see the monitor down here let's look at our first one here. okay oh it's behind us sorry about that oh it's behind us yes who's that that's What's my he uncle no it's not although you do resemble him <laughs> I mean, Who I is that? To... That is uh, for redheads. That is a racist uh, <laughs> symbol right there. That's like the uh, the, the the Quaker mix guy. No, it's no not that's the, the uh, Lucky Charms. Yeah, let me tell you about a story so true. We show me style and it's all so cool. It's about a garment torn and frayed. Getting this brand, the story conveyed. Walking down the streets with holes in my teeth. Each rip and tear part of me you see. It ain't about the brand of the label it holds. It's about the journey, the stories it unfolds. In these ragged clothes, I find my voice. A testament to resilience, my choice. From the streets to the stage, I rock my style. In my tattered shirt, I walk that mile. The tour, but still I stand in my ragged attire I command, it's not just fabric It's a statement, I preach in my threadbare garment I find my reason From the barrio to the bar I make my mark in my worn out jeans I leave a spark, and they call it rags But I call it art, and every stitch and tear I play my part, it's the struggle of the streets The hustle so real in my tattered jacket I seal the deal, a symbol of defiance Against the status quo, my passion the pants I let it show, it's not about the riches or the wealth I lack in my faded hoodie, I stay on track It's the heart of the hustle, the grind each day In my worn out kips, I find my way Ripped and torn, but still I stand In my ragged attire I command It's not just fabric, it's a statement I preach In my threadbare garment I find my reach so here's to the ones with the clothes that tear in our patched up attire we have so let the world see our garments worn for in our rags our stories are born in the language of the streets we speak in our torn up clothes we find our peak bam look at that good for you okay i, thought next. I didn't drink last night yeah right next let's see what, okay who's that that's the uh that's the tricks bunny. Yes. Wired out of his mind. Yes, he is a little on the wired side. Yeah, so back when they didn't so care what kids ate. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, that's true. I think we have two more. Let's see what's next. All right, this guy. Can you see him? Yeah, that's the, uh... oh, that's one of the founding fathers. <laughs> he said that all men are created equal as long as they're white. <laughs> right? Isn't that what it is? One of those guys? No, no? it's not. It's Wasn't the Quaker the, the, Oats man. Ah, I thought all that right? was the and we uh, have, I Bicentennial Fruit Loops guy. No, it's not. <laughs> but speaking of that, let's see. Do we have another one or is that it? Oh, 
Oh, oh that is uh, Johnny Mathis. <laughs> It looks like the cover of that Christmas album he had. No? Uh, Sorry.